Today, Martin Baker are world leaders in ejection seat technology, with their seats having saved thousands of lives. But before this, they were originally aircraft manufacturers, and throughout the 1930s into the 1940s, they produced a series of innovative prototype aircraft. Their work accumulated in the MB-5, a prototype fighter that was comparable to contemporary fighters of the mid-1940s. So today, join me on a fascinating tale of determination, hard work and tragedy as we trace the origins of Martin Baker and the series of four prototype aircraft they produced. Hi, I'm Jared, this is the Antique Air Show and this is the story of Martin Baker's prototype aircraft. The story of Martin Baker begins in the mid-late 1920s and begins with Irish-born engineer James Martin. Born in Crossgar, County Down in 1893, Martin earned his engineering qualifications in Belfast before moving to London. By 1925, he had begun building cars. In 1929, James Martin established the Martin Aircraft Works, based out of Denham, Buckinghamshire. His first design was a simple low-wing monoplane design, side-by-side -side seating and powered by a Cirrus Herms engine mounted behind the cockpit. Martin's philosophy was simple. He wanted to design aircraft that were simple, affordable, easy to manufacture and maintain, and above all, safe. In 1934, Martin met Captain Valentine Baker, a decorated First World War pilot and London Aeroplane Club's chief instructor. The two clicked and on August 17, 1934, the Martin Baker Aircraft Company was born. Captain Valentine Baker became the company's chief test pilot. Captain Baker also brought along important connections, with his wealthy good friend Francis Francis joining the company as a director and pumping in much needed funds. In 1935, Martin Baker's first design appeared in the form of a two-seater low-wing monoplane powered by a 160 horsepower Napier Javelin 3A SI cylinder engine. The aircraft featured a fixed undercarriage and the airframe was constructed from Martin's own and patented steel tubing design that was covered in fabric. The MB1 flew for the first time with Captain Baker in early 1935 and while it was considered an all-round good flying machine, due to it entering a market full of competition, only the one was ever built. With war on the horizon, Martin Baker shifted to designing fighters. Their next aircraft, known as the MB-2, was undertaken as a private venture, but followed closely the Air Ministry specification F-534. This demanded for a single-seat, monoplane fighter with retractable undercarriage, at least six machine guns, and a top speed of at least 275 miles per hour at 15,000 feet. The MB-2 would utilise the same steel tubing construction of the MB-1, this time covered by a mixture of fabric and geranium. It would also have a fixed undercarriage, and while Martin envisioned the design to have a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, he had to settle for a Napier Dagger 323 cylinder engine. Still, the aircraft had its strengths. Its modular design allowed the engine to be replaced in 90 minutes. The outer wing could be assembled within 25 minutes. Construction on the new prototype aircraft was slow, and it wouldn't be until the beginning of August 1938 that Captain Baker undertook its maiden flight. The aircraft impressed from an engineering standpoint, but its flying capabilities showed serious stability issues, particularly directional control. The MB-2 featured no vertical tail, so Martin decided to add a small one to try and improve its flying qualities. Trials at RAF Harwell and then the Aeroplane and Armament Experimental Establishment at Marshalsham Heath found that directional control was still rather poor, so Martin was forced to add a conventional tail. The Air Ministry would purchase the MB-2 prototype in July 1939, however by now it was clear that this would be the sole example of the type. It had been designed to a specification over 5 years old and thus the Air Ministry was concerned that it would be obsolete by the time it entered service. Sources differ on the final state of the MB-2, 
with some stating it was dismantled in 1941, while others have the airframe lasting as long as 1944. As production of the MB-2 started to look doubtful, in early 1939, Martin began work on a new and improved fighter design, the MB-3. In June 1939, the Air Ministry awarded Martin Baker a contract for three prototypes of the new fighter to meet Air Ministry specification F-1839. This specification required the new fighter aircraft to be capable of at least 400 miles per hour at 12,000 feet have a ceiling of 35,000 feet, and carry two cannons and eight machine guns. Like the prototypes that came before it, the MB-3 would contain a tubular steel frame. However, now the majority would be skinned with aluminium, the rudder staying fabric covered. Six 20mm cannons, three in each wing, were fitted, and it was designed to take the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine. However, the Air Ministry insisted on the Napier Sabre engine, resulting in delays to the prototype as the MB-3 was designed to take the new power plant. By the end of 1941, any possibilities of the type entering production had been removed, but as the prototype was nearing completion, it was decided that the aircraft would be finished. By July 1942, the Martin Baker MB-3 prototype was ready. The Air Ministry insisted that flight testing take place at RAF Wing in Buckinghamshire, a location James Martin had objected to using as it was surrounded by small fields and many trees that left little room for emergency landings. Sadly for Martin, he would eventually be proven correct to be concerned. On August 31st, 1942, Captain Baker took the MB-3 for its first test flight. However, it was cut short due to overheating problems with the Sabre engine. Overheating problems with the Sabre engine would be an issue that persisted throughout flight testing of the aircraft. Further flights highlighted that the MB-3 had quite good handling and manoeuvrability, and Martin Baker claimed that a top speed of 430 miles per hour was achieved, although the prototype did fly without the six cannons installed. But on the 10th flight, just two weeks later, tragedy struck. On September 12, 1942, the Sabre engine seized up shortly after takeoff. With limited altitude, Captain Baker decided to put the aircraft down in a small field near the airfield. However, upon landing, the aircraft hit an obstacle, ploughed through a hedge and cartwheel, bursting into flames. Captain Valentine Baker, Martin Baker's chief test pilot, and company co-founder was instantly killed. The loss devastated the company, and especially James Martin. Still, Martin pressed on. The second MB-3 prototype had been partially constructed. Work on the third example was never started. Martin was then finally given permission from the Air Ministry to use a Rolls-Royce Griffin engine and he set out to design a new fighter aircraft around this engine. The results would be the impressive Martin Baker MB-5. Designed to the same specification to that of the MB-3, the MB-5 was mostly a new design. It did utilise the same wings as the MB-3, and at its core still used the steel tube construction of previous models. However, a whole new fuselage had been designed around the Griffin engine, and its steel tube inners were completely covered by light, detachable metal plates that offered terrific accessibility to the systems hidden underneath. The MB-5 would be powered by a Rolls-Royce Griffin 83 engine, capable of producing 2,340 horsepower, spinning two contra-rotating propellers. Construction of the new aircraft began in 1942. However, delays were encountered in part due to Martin constantly tinkering and changing the design. Eventually, on the 23rd of May, 1944, the MB-5 prototype was disassembled and trucked from the Martin Baker factory at Denham to the RAF station at Harwell, where it was reassembled and readied for its maiden flight. Grand runs were undertaken, and later that very same day, with Rotul test pilot Leslie Bryan Greenstead at the controls, the MB-5 took to the air for the first time. 
Being able to disassemble, truck, reassemble, and then fly the aircraft in the same afternoon was a real credit to the design work of James Martin. Not many planes would be capable of doing that. Initial thoughts on the aircraft from Greenstead were not overly positive, with the pilot supposedly describing it as, quote, an absolute swine to fly, end quote. As a result, Martin further tinkered with the design, adding a taller vertical stabiliser and rudder, and at some point a new horizontal stabiliser was also fitted. Upon flying the updated design, Greenstead became impressed with the aircraft. Still though, these changes delayed the program by another six months, and by October 1944, the Air Ministry, seeing that the Second World War was beginning to come to an end, informed Martin Baker that the MB-5 would not enter production. A year later, with the war now ended, the aircraft had only accumulated about 40 flight hours. During October 1945, the MB-5 was put on display for Winston Churchill and RAF officials. During the display, the Griffin engine failed, resulting in Greenstead having to jettison the canopy as oil and smoke began to obscure his view. Miraculously, he managed to land the aircraft without further damage. At the beginning of 1946, the prototype was handed over to the Aeroplane and Armament Experimental Establishment at Boscombe Down. For the most part, the MB-5's flying characteristics were generally praised, although its roll rate and the acceleration could have been better. However, what could not be denied was how easy it was to maintain the aircraft. As one report stated, quote, the general design and layout of the MB is excellent and is infinitely better than any other similar type of aircraft, end quote. The MB-5 prototype would continue to test fly briefly with the Havilland and then at RAE Farnborough until May 1948 when it was sent to the Air Ministry Servicing Development Unit at RAF Watersham. Here it served as a training airframe before passing on to RAF Birkham Newton at the turn of the new decade. Its fate is not overly clear, but it is reported that the MB-5 was used as a ground target until the remains of the aircraft were burnt in 1963. The MB-5 would mark the end of Martin's attempt to produce aircraft, as by now the company was starting to find success in another venture, air crew safety systems. Following the death of Captain Baker, the company had started to increasingly focus on air crew safety, coming particularly interested in crew ejection methods. This had resulted in January 1945, the company undertaking its first static ejection, and then on the 24th of July 1946, its first ejection from an aircraft during flight. Since those first jumps, Martin Baker have continued to be world leaders in ejection seat technology, and to this day continues to save lives around the globe with its systems. But that is all a story for another day.